Michael, you, as I already pointed out, quite literally wrote the book on the new right, which we talk about often. Now, our communists seem so soft to me. Now, I know they're vicious and murderous and aggressive like communists always were, but they seem so soft, as much as I obviously despise guys like Mao, Lenin, Stalin, Che, I mean, you name it. They were at least fighters. Almost all these guys had body counts, lots of them. They've been shot at and shot other people. Our communists seem to be so weak. The second you touch them at all, they just lose their minds. Jesse, I, I can't help but glory at that picture that you just posted of yourself on the throne. <laughs> that is the most ornate and beautiful dunce cap I think I have ever seen. <laughs> it, it, it almost looks like a crown, but you got to look closely. <laughs> Um, I, I, this is the point I agree with you completely. The enemy class is not composed of impressive people. And I, just yeah. one simple example, that libs of TikTok um, uh, account that I got doxxed. Look at any college professor on Twitter. They're not saying things that are particularly insightful. They're not saying things that are much different from what your annoying aunt or grandma is posting you know, on Facebook. It's the same mindset, the same insights. You're not gonna get some kind of sophisticated reasoning or anything like that. So this is a glorious day and we're taking the fight to the enemy class. Michael, you're great about psychologizing these people. It, look, if I was, I mean, if I was one of these people and I was really upset about the idea of free speech I would think that would give me a moment, even if it's a private moment, where I thought, man, am I the bad guy here? I mean, remember, he's not some card-carrying right-winger. He just said it's the public square. Everyone should be able to speak. We don't even know if he'll go through it. But if he does, that's what's freaking them out. They have no idea they're the bad guys, though, do they? Well, I, I don't think it's the free... They don't really care for free speech. And I don't think most people care for free speech because, some, frankly, if some horrible people are getting you know, silenced, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and I don't even mean in terms of politics. They're just some bad people who should not be welcome in many certain places. What they're concerned about is control. The only way that this kind of ideology can maintain its hold on power, which it's had for a century, is having a monopoly on the microphone. Uh, we saw this you know, in the 70s and 80s. You had three news channels. Everyone came home, had dinner with the family, watched the news, CBS, NBC, or ABC. You had three variants of progressive democracy, progressive Democratic Party, and people thought they had choices. Now with YouTube, you have infinite voices who can speak. Uh, Twitter, you got to have infinite, except for the people who get kicked off. And this is a big problem for them, because sometimes when people have choices, they're not going to choose between Coke and Pepsi. They're going to drink, you know, uh, unsweetened iced tea or water or energy drinks, and they need to form those coalitions to form a majority, and that's increasingly impossible. And, and, and the thing is, it's glorious. Because unless you have a governing majority, you can't do things like lockdowns. You can't do things like send people to war overseas for no reason. What kind of loser would drink unsweetened tea? Uh, someone I'm trying to lose weight. Oh, gosh. All right. Speaking of Not someone trying to lose weight. Us, Jesse. <laughs> Speaking of trying to lose weight, we have a clip from The View. Here's Sonny Hostin. And in fact, on Twitter, it is predominantly straight white men. So when Elon Musk says, wow, this is about free speech, it seems to me that it's about free speech of straight white men. And so let them have it. Let them just go at it. I enjoy the block button on Twitter. Um, I think it has a real outsized influence in, in, in our world because politicians and celebrities are on it. Michael, it's not a surprise that an ideological gerbil like Sonny would want, you know, would bring up straight white men and bring race into this. That's no surprise to anybody. But have we crossed the Rubicon on that word being effective? I know it's been effective for a long time. It plays right into white guilt America. But I think it's finally run its course. No? I think, I think it ran its course in 2016. I think you missed the key point of what she said, where she said, let them have it. This was a retreat. Notice she's saying, well, the grapes were sour to begin with. Oh, t first of all, the idea that Twitter, which is a worldwide social media platform, would be majority male at all, let alone white male, let alone straight white male, is complete nonsensical. I, I don't know how many followers she have. She has, I'm sure it's a lot. And you have to keep in mind that The View is the Karen mothership. It is their job to program all the Karens in America who are overwhelmingly <laughs> female, by the way, by females, uh, who are the biggest probably social political group that's causing problems in America and the world at large with their busybodiness and neurosis.
Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History, The Forgotten Genocide, the first episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.